You shouldn't wear bonnets out in public. Why? Because it's tacky. What makes it tacky? You wouldn't wear it to work or church. I'm not at work or church. But it's not presentable. Presentable to whom? Presentable to other people. But I'm not getting dressed for other people. Look, it, it just makes you look like you don't have any class. So somehow the bonnet deteriorates my value according to people I don't know. We also don't know who these people are or who set the standard. So therefore I should take it off? That the bonnet and do-rag conversation has a lot to do with that as well. And I agree, it, it definitely is um, something that is a generational thing, but it is being passed down to a lot of younger generations. Thank you for offering your opinion. I appreciate it so much. Um, I just had some follow-up questions. Who are they trying to be accepted by to be considered fixed up? According to whom are they trying to be fixed up for? And why would their opinions matter? And who has mandated that this bonnet and do-rag um, is considered to be unacceptable? And to whom is it unacceptable to? Who determines what is halfway decent? Because they got people that show up in yoga pants and messy buns on a regular basis in public. So who are they trying to be halfway decent for? Who is the acceptability assigned to? That's an interesting point. If you wouldn't wear it to work or you wouldn't wear it to church, you shouldn't wear it outside. I understand that point. But now I can wear my pajamas to work. And who created those dress codes? So I, I'm just trying to understand when it's not a work or church situation, why as a society, as a culture, why is it black culture applies that same logic? And to be perfectly honest, so was I. Before 2009, I wouldn't have dreamed wearing my hair like this. I wouldn't have dreamed of wearing a bonnet or hair tie going outside because it was not socially acceptable. Although there were laws passed for me to cover up my hair because it wasn't socially acceptable. I think sometimes we don't realize how much we've been conditioned as black people to cave to what is acceptable through whiteness and white gazes. That's why it's important to question who are we trying to be acceptable to and for? Because there are quite a few people who are not in our community that could care less about what we think about the way that they dress. Mm -hmm. And they have the ability to go out in public looking a hot awful mess and not have the same experiences as us. So yes, this is the point I want to speak to as well. Many times we are considered, and I mean we as black people, are considered to be unkept, nappy, tacky when we embrace our culture. That is why a lot of times in professional roles, they don't want you to wear bright colors. They don't want you to wear distracting hairstyle. Why is my hair the way that it grows out of my scalp distracting? I'm not distracted by my hair. You're distracted by my hair. You're the one with the personal problem. And that's where I'm going with this discussion when it comes to bonnets and do-rags. Most of the times, it's not that we have the problem with it is that some of us are trying to appease that gaze, that colonial gaze that we're not acceptable as a culture of who we are and what we enjoy. So we have to tame ourselves to fit their acceptance. Here's the other thing. COVID proved that most dress codes, unless it is for your safety, are proven to be rooted in racism. We were all put in the house to do our jobs. Our professionalism didn't go away. Our education, our experience to speak, and our expertise to speak to the way that we do our jobs didn't go away. And we've been doing our jobs in our pajamas this whole time. I've done my job in my bonnet. It didn't take away from the fact that I have two degrees. It didn't take away from the fact that I have certifications. It didn't take away from the fact that I have several books that I research through on a regular basis. That bonnet doesn't take away from who I am as a person. It is something that I choose to wear. As a culture, I think we should think about the things that we hold sacred in our community and why we toss them aside for white acceptance. I think a lot of people have this talk 
Um, and I think as the generations got younger, uh, we stopped caring because we started to learn that we could have all the degrees. We could look put together. We could straighten our hair. We could perm our hair and it didn't matter. They still were going to find something. I've had this same conversation with uh, my grandparents and uh, their sisters about acceptance. That's why you will find me with the bonnet outside. You will find me with um, the loudest colors. You will find me with the most extravagant hairstyles because I'm going to still be me. They don't take away from nothing. Because even when I don't do those things, I've still been discriminated against. A few videos ago, I posted about my experience in the hospital uh, two weeks ago. No bonnet, no loud colors, nothing. Still discriminated against. So I want to dig a little deeper. Um, why is that the pro? Why is that a problem? The bonnet, the biker shorts, the belly hanging out. Why is that the problem? I'm sure that's not something that you would wear outside. Um, I'll wear the bonnet outside. Um, but I, I just want to know, like, what would be the problem um, for you personally seeing someone else in a bonnet um, with the biker shorts and the belly hanging out? Why would that be a problem? So... One person's roll out of bed style, which is the messy bun and the yoga pants, is considered to be acceptable. But someone else's roll out of bed with a bonnet with the yoga pants doesn't seem to be acceptable. And we tend to know why. Sometimes we don't think about it deep enough as to why. Why we have been conditioned to think one is more acceptable than the other. Case in point, one of my students... um had bath day and her mother would drop her off with yoga pants and a messy bun every day her classmate her mom came to the school one day because she forgot something with a bonnet on and yoga pants the mom with the bonnet was criticized the mom with the messy bun was not what is the determining factor for decent and who determines decent and who gives them the authority to determine it as decent? But as a whole, they're not judged the same. So the mom with the messy bun and the yoga pants can go into Starbucks and it'd be okay. The mom with the yoga pants and the bonnet cannot go into Starbucks without feeling ostracized and having her picture taken and plastered all over social media. The reason why I started this discussion because someone posted it on Twitter of a group of black women at an airport with bonnets standing in line. That photo was then posted on Facebook and then Instagram. They are not judged societally the same. And I'm not necessarily talking about in colonial culture. I'm talking about within black culture. See, most of the black people will not have a problem with the white person wearing a bun, a messy bun and her yoga pants. But they will jump and share that picture of black women in bonnets. They thought they could dress their way out of oppression. As I get older, I start to realize that like. Nothing I can do, nothing I can wear, nothing I can say, no amount of money will ever take away from me being black. No matter what I do on the outside to make myself more palatable to white people, I will never be palatable just because I'm black. That realization is really what sparked my transition into becoming the person who I view myself as on the inside. Like wearing the clothes that I wear, having the jewelry that I have and tattoos and all this other stuff like... Me being black is heavier than all of that. Like, at the end of the day, I'm going to be black. I'm going to be dark-skinned. I'm going to be perceived as a woman that is aggressive and loud and all of these negative stereotypes. There's nothing I can do to get away from that, and I really just need to live my life unapologetically without harming myself or anyone else. I think sometimes we don't realize how connected things are, especially when we talk about things culturally. So in the bonnets and durags conversation, there are a few words that keep coming up. Tacky, 
trifling, ghetto, hood, project. A lot of these terms are associated with class. And I don't think that sometimes we know outside of what we've been taught growing up, where some of these terminologies come from and why we use this to look down upon other people. Maybe I should do a video series on that next. <laughs> you better talk about it because um, the pajamas outside, the yoga pants, the messy buns, the jeans and a t-shirt at work, the shorts and new balances at work. And I understand how there is historically a need for us to um, appear to look better and be better kept because of how we are viewed underneath the colonial gaze. I get that. I get why we have to dress professional at work, although our professional dress has nothing to do with how we do our job. Just to give a little bit of historical context, um, George Washington was broke and um, he dressed his slaves to the nine so that he didn't appear to be broke. So yeah, there's some history in that. I can see this point of view as well. Um, a few people have said it's not necessarily the bonnets or the durags. I know some people have seen like women who wear bonnets tend to have dirty looking clothes and men with durags have to have dirty looking clothes. But even the women that don't look dirty, even the men that don't look dirty are sometimes categorized as being dirty and classless and ghetto and less than all because of what they had on their head sad but that's what people actually associate that with and most of the times they don't know where that idea comes from it's just been taught to them to dress presentable in public but they don't know where that comes from i've seen this uh and i was taught this too however i'm a firm believer in what's for you is for you so if i have no intentions of meeting anyone and I meet someone and it's a good conversation, whether it's about a job or a project or just getting to know someone. If that person doesn't accept me for who I am, no matter what state I'm in, and they're going to judge me just based off of how I look. Then do I really want to be in the presence of these people? And if it's a job situation that I wasn't looking for, um, my question would then be. What type of manager would this person be? Would I be okay with being micromanaged, being ostracized, being feel like I feel like I have to be put together at all times when I'm not in the office? I'm minding my business. I'm not doing anything. So why should I conform to what I would do in the office versus outside? I can see that stereotype being applied to uh, people who wear bonnets, but I, I want to challenge what is ratchet. Because I, I keep seeing terms like ratchet, ghetto, uncouth, uh, unprofessional, uh, project, you name it. Um, but I haven't seen anyone define what that means and how it pertains to bonnets. I mean, I appreciate your comment and it's very common and it, it it's, it's more common coming up, uh, from people as we continue to dive into this conversation. But two things have not been presented. No one has told me who has made the standards that we are trying to present our best to. And no one has clearly defined ghetto ratchet and all the other names that they assess, they assign to people with the bonnets. I can see that. But I wonder what is considered loud. And where that stereotype of loudness comes from and why that exists. Because historically, the people who they label as loud were not meant to have a voice. The people they label as not having any manners are typically those who are resistant to being obedient and inferior. George Washington said this of one of his... Um, slaves uh as i'm going through the on a judge story he referred to uh two of his slaves as lazy and um insubordinate and impudent because they were defiant slaves something to think about
I do not disagree. Bonnets and durags in public are a matter of choice. And how you feel about it is a matter of choice. The part that I, I think I'm trying to uh, reach with this discussion um, is to understand why there is such um, a negative attachment to the bonnet and the durag, the way that hair, nails, um, and style originally for black people was demonized and then became acceptable and then monetized by popular culture. Because we were losing jobs and everything for wearing braids. But then somebody who wasn't black decided to wear braids and it became all the rage. Same with them long nails that be clickety clack. They fun now. But in the 90s and the early 2000s, oh, it was, it was a no-go. It was not socially acceptable because it was deemed ghetto and ratchet. Why? Why? Because... COVID has normalized people being in pajamas and going places in sweats. Why? Who deems it to be unacceptable? I understand if you're going to your job and there's a dress code. I understand going into certain restaurants and there's a dress code. I understand going into certain businesses and there's a dress code. But if there is no dress code and you're just out and about minding your business, why is that unacceptable? And who is it unacceptable to? And why is it unacceptable to them? <laughs> you better say it. You better say it. You better say it. You better say it. I think people only know an extent of the t on laws. So black women were told to cover their hair up because their hair was too distracting. Uh, there were actual children over the past three years in schools in Texas being suspended because their hair was too distracting. So the Tion laws were passed to make sure that black women covered their hair and then they covered their hair and then they said that the covering was too extravagant. And now black women are still trying to pass the Crown Act to make sure that they can wear their hair out the way that it grows out of their scalps. So black women, like you said, are being gaslit to either cover their hair or to wear their hair out. There is no in between apparently. There is no either or. And with this conversation, I'm hoping that we can start diving into more of who we are trying to be acceptable to and why we're trying to be acceptable to them. Say this point, how slippers were frowned upon when walking outside. Now people wear slides outside because they are now decorative and they seem to be socially acceptable. Black culture has popularized the house slipper. The question is, are black people monetizing off of their ability to popularize an item that was once frowned upon? I don't disagree with getting dressed for work. I don't disagree with you getting dressed up to go to someplace formal. I don't disagree with someone saying, if you come to my house, this is what is expected in my house. That's a standard there. I don't personally have those standards in my house. If you come to my house and you want to feel welcomed as you are, then you will be welcomed as you are. And yes, society today is more casual because we've learned throughout history that a lot of it has been performative. We've learned that your intelligence, your ability to do your job, your experience has nothing to do with what you wear. We've also learned that a lot of people can dress the part but don't know how to do their job. I just think this conversation is so interesting as we're unpacking with the different platforms that I'm using to learn from different black people in different walks of life, that there's a certain standard that they set for themselves. But I think sometimes we don't know where that standard comes from and what it's rooted in. Yes, very true. If you were of working age in the early 2000s, then you know that nose piercings, tattoos, um, colorful hair was not acceptable in the workplace. That has only recently become acceptable. And I mean, post 2010s, if you really want to push it, maybe after 2015, you could not wear a nose ring the way that you see nose rings almost everywhere. People were losing their minds when they saw Meghan Markle's mom show up to her wedding with a nose ring. That is how recent that is. And the fact that she had locks. My mother too. But did your mother tell you why? Did she tell you why she didn't want you to go outside with your hair not done? And what was undone hair considered to be? Because right now my hair back then was considered to be undone because my edges aren't slicked down because my hair has flyaways. I, I, this is considered to be undone by those previous standards. To me, it's done.
I put a tie around it. It's done. But I'm interested in what the reason was your mo- your mother gave you for saying that to you. A lot of black girls, I'm pretty sure, have the same reason. Dirty is different from bonnets and durags. Now, I don't agree with wearing dirty clothes out in public. Um, but if you don't have any place to wash your clothes, then, I mean, I understand. So what is the correlation between the do-rags and the bonnets and working in cor- corrections? And that causes you to have that um, outlook on the bonnet and the do-rag. I remember. I remember when um, NBA players used to show up with these big oversized Steve Harvey shoot, uh, suits from the 90s. And then as years progressed, we started seeing several different styles. And I believe it is Odell Beckham and Cam Newton and LeBron James that started to change the game. And I'm here for it. I am here for our style being able to be displayed the way that we want it to be. Because we know they're going to try to profit off of it anyway. When we think it's not acceptable, they're going to say it's edgy. So when I wear my bonnet outside, I still think I look good when I go outside. My clothes are clean. My hair is clean. My face is clean. And I still wear my bonnet. Um, I saw your other comments about your mom saying that you have to be spectacular um, and put your best foot forward. But my question would be, who would she think that putting your best foot forward would be acceptable to? Who is it being acceptable for? Because wearing a bonnet and being clean when I go outside, I'm acceptable to myself. That doesn't make me any less intelligent. That doesn't make me any less um, clean. That doesn't make me any less, uh, make me see myself as less valuable. Um, So I was just curious to why she would think that it's not putting your best foot forward. That's the point I'm getting to. And I believe that most people are missing that point. Our natural hair was deemed to be unacceptable for years. To the point laws were being passed against it. And laws now are being pushed to prevent further discrimination against our hair. And I don't think that we are seeing the ramifications of that same bias that we have within our own community and how we're pushing that same narrative. But what about bonnets? I also think that we're not looking at the fact that there's some classism in the way that we're discussing the bonnets and the durags. Look, it it just makes you look like you don't have any class. I love her video. Please go watch it. The whole bonnet discussion has me realizing why I have such a hard time wearing certain articles of clothing in public. Things like oversized t-shirts, jogging sets, jogging pants, joggers because they look like jogging pants. And it's because I was made fun of for wearing those articles of clothing as a child because those were the things we got from the Salvation Army because that was all we could afford. People made fun of me for being poor. And isn't that just classism? Aren't most of us against being classist? Why is this particular expression of classism something that we're still okay with? We don't know the financial situation of the person who's wearing the bonnet, and even if we did, why would we judge them for it?